Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me again and welcome to any new viewers. This is To The Point English with Ben. I'm Ben. And in this video, you're going to learn some very useful and extremely common English proverbs. But what makes this video particularly special is that this time I'm joined by John from the fantastic podcast English with Monty. Now, you may know John from his podcast, but you may also know him from his appearances on Gideon's YouTube channel, Let Them Talk TV. Um, and you also may remember that I interviewed Gideon a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so in this video, uh, I'm going to share some of my favorite proverbs and uh, John is going to share some of his favorite pro proverbs and we're going to explain uh, the, the meanings and the uses of these proverbs and why we think they're particularly useful to you. Okay, so without any further ado, enjoy the video. Hello, John. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Ben. Yeah, it's good to be on here. Thanks for inviting me on. You're very welcome. It's good to have you. Um, obviously, later we're going to be talking about some of our favorite proverbs. Um, I'm going to explain the meanings and uses of those. But first of all, could you just um, tell everyone who's maybe not familiar with you uh, who you are and and maybe tell us a little bit about your, your podcast? Uh, yeah, sure. So my name's John, of course, and, and I do a podcast called English with Monty, uh, which I've done mainly, I guess, with uh, with Gideon, um, mm -hmm. who, who I believe that you interviewed uh, previously. And uh, and also, obviously, we've done one ourselves, haven't we? We did one on exam preparation and the, the idea of taking an exam. Um, mm -hmm. Mostly the podcast is about different elements i guess to do with grammar but but there are elements uh like the one that we did together yeah obviously of course dealing on that subject um but yeah i, I tend to do things like eight minute english so that they're kind of grammar points for eight minutes and then we've done things like getting a job in london or the cultural diversity of london uh, a lot of it is a bit more london based on that side of things just because of uh monty being based in london Mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, that, that's it, more or less. Yeah, it's good. As you said, I had the privilege and the honor to appear on your podcast. We spoke about Cambridge English exam preparation. So I, I, mm -hmm. I highly recommend uh, the, your podcast. And I do have to ask, of course, because I did ask Gideon in the last interview if he had a question for you. And I think he had a couple. Was, um, I think it was if one of the questions was, is Solly Hull part of Birmingham and is Pluto a planet? So... I don't know if you have a have an answer to those. I I was I was going to be really prepared for this, and then <laughs> then then I'm just not at all. Um, I I think Pluto is not a planet, as far as I'm aware. Mm -hmm. It has recently been made not a planet, as mm -hmm. far as I know, um, within the last five years or so, maybe. Don't know. I, I think that is true. Yeah, I, I don't know the details, but I think yeah, it is no longer a planet. And Solly Hole being part of Birmingham, I don't know. This is always a bit of a controversial one. It is um, on some level. I suppose it depends how you consider it. Um, that there is a the borough of Solly Hole, mm -hmm. which is uh, where my parents live and where I grew up, but mm -hmm. it actually does have a Coventry postcode, which is mm -hmm. even more confusing and we're right on the edge of warwickshire right so um i would say around there it's it's pretty confusing so i will diplomatically say maybe okay right but i think it sounds quite similar because for the viewers um john doesn't really have much of a solly hull or Br birmingham accent or brummy accent for me it was similar i was born in romford so i when i was young i had a strong almost cockney accent and it's similar. Is Romford part of London? Perhaps now you could say it is, but when I was born there, it was considered just just outside London. So maybe you know it's a similar story. In terms of accent, though, I've never really had a very strong accent. I guess I mean okay. I grew up in a village which, when I was growing up, had much more influence from the Coventry accent, mm -hmm. and the Coventry accent is quite neutral. That a lot of people couldn't really tell what a Coventry accent was unless they're actually from the area. Right. Even my parents, who are both not from the area, didn't realize that there was really a Coventry accent until a few years ago. Um, right. And they lived there for a, a very long time. So, right. yes, it's uh, I, I guess nowadays it's more 
kind of a Birmingham accent, but simply because you've got more people moving out from mm-hmm. that that kind of side of town, I guess, that, that kind of side of the Midlands. Yeah. So we're going to start talking about some proverbs now. So mm-hmm. uh, before we get into the proverbs themselves, I thought we should firstly define what is a proverb. And I'm going to explain a little why I think it's useful to at least know about proverbs, because a proverb is basically a short statement. This is from the Cambridge Dictionary, by the way, a short statement, usually known by many, that gives advice or expresses some common truth. So so these are very common in, in English, but probably in pretty much all languages. I imagine all languages have some f- types of proverbs. Um, and they sort of they survive generations and they're passed on. And as the definition says, they, they often give advice or express a common truth. So we, we use them a lot in a similar way to the way we use um, idioms, idiomatic expressions that um, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to understand the meaning from the words. But, you know, sometimes you need to get to know you need to un- either find out the definition or from the context, you can often figure out what the meaning is but they're useful to learn because we use them a lot as i said so mostly it's to be able to understand them when you hear them but if you can use them i mean even in your exam if you're taking an an english exam then they can be um, very effective in expressing your ideas in a more uh, more natural way there is there will always be an alternative to the the proverb or the idiom if we're talking about idioms but as I said, we use proverbs a lot, so they're worth knowing. Uh, my first proverb, which is quite a common one, and I'll explain why I've chosen it in the moment, is make hay while the sun shines. So make hay while the sun shines. Are you familiar with this one, John? Uh, yes, yeah, very familiar with that one. I guess it's something that's used pretty often, isn't it, in the mm-hmm. UK? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it is. And uh, it, we use it... We use it when we're expressing the idea that you should take advantage of uh, an opportunity or a situation when it arises and not not wait too long or delay when perhaps it's not the best moment. So I think the best way to understand it is to explain the literal meaning of, of the proverb, make hay while the sun shines. To make hay, hay is the, the dry straw that often is used for feeding animals but you need to to prepare it you need to cut it down and store it and that's making hay so if you do it when the sun sun shines when the sun is shining so make hay while the sun shines you're taking advantage of the the opportunity you're not if you don't do it when the sun shines it could could it could rain and then it's it's too late or it's not the best moment so i think we can really relate this to learning english um if you, what often happens to me, I don't know to you, John, I often get people contact me when they need, they need their English. For example, they may say, I'm starting a new job next week. I need to improve my English. Mm-hmm. Or I need the C1 Advanced Cambridge English exam certification uh, for a job interview I have in two weeks. Okay, we can try and prepare you for that. We can try and improve your English level, but it would have been better if you had done it before when you had perhaps more time and you had a better opportunity so you you could have made hay while the sun shines so that's what i recommend to people who are learning english you know if you have an opportunity now then take take that opportunity and don't leave it until it's too late when you have to do everything very quickly and maybe you don't have enough time or it's just not the best situation so yeah does that happen to you john yeah, I suppose it does. I mean, I, I always kind of thought about it more in a, a business context. I know that goes away <laughs> from English a little no, bit. No, it's but fine. Yeah, it's it's kind of if you're in a situation where you can make a lot of money at, at a certain moment, then you kind of take advantage of that fact. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, obviously that can be related to English, can't it? It's, it's a case of take the opportunity when you can, make mm-hmm. sure... You know, if you're in the right situation, make sure you make the most of that, really. Yeah, in business, it's very common. Yeah, take advantage of the, the best opportunity when you have it. Because if you delay, if you hesitate, then you're it may pass and you'll miss it. Yeah. So, John, what about your, your first proverb? 
What do you have? I thought, I'd, uh, yeah, I thought I'd go with every cloud has a silver lining. Mm -hmm. Because no. I thought that, that that was quite a nice one in the sense that usually in the UK, we have a lot of clouds. <laughs> and uh, I, I always find that students, when they come to London, they have this stereotype in their head that it always rains in London, mm -hmm. which we, we kind of self perpetuate in uh, or, or perpetuate this myth in, in films. And and they, I guess maybe it's partly because of climate change, but London certainly has a fairly good climate nowadays and, and it doesn't really rain too much mm -hmm. or it certainly hasn't done in the last five or 10 years. And so I, I thought every cloud is a silver lining. It means that every situation you can find the positives, the, the sun will come out eventually. Mm -hmm. So obviously the silver lining is is kind of the the sun outlining the cloud, isn't it? So yeah. maybe from an English context, you know, if you're feeling a bit down and something bad has happened, um, maybe you you've, you know, not passed a test or you've uh, not got the job maybe mm -hmm. you can look for a positive in that and see how you can improve and and you can push on um yeah you know next time and and make it better yeah yeah i think that's a really nice one because it's, it's positive isn't it you know being optimistic even in in a bad situation looking at the looking on the bright side so yeah i think you you mentioned maybe if you fail an exam or fail a test and this is something I say to my students. Yeah, of course, you don't want to fail any exam, but the the silver lining to to failing an, an exam is that you're the best preparation for an exam is by taking the exam. So even even if you fail the exam, the silver lining in that experience is that you are more prepared for next time. And and you know you you do learn from all experiences. So actually, I didn't mention before. Actually, John, you're in in. Istan Istanbul at the moment, aren't you? So that's why we can see the sun shining through your, your window. It's not you're not in London. In, in, <laughs> indeed, actually, I've I've been very lucky recently because because the weather hasn't been that great in Istanbul. I mean, yesterday it was beautiful, but um, today has been particularly nice. Probably one of the first days of of spring uh, to some extent. So mm. yeah, I've been lucky enough to to be in this wonderful city and. Uh, yeah sharing time with some Turkish friends of mine, which has been great. Uh, Daria and Gizem, I'll give them a shout out because they've been lovely hosts and they've shown mm -hmm. me some wonderful places, which has been uh, great. Right. Yeah, fantastic. I guess they'll they'll be watching this, right? They'll... I'll point them without, in, without a doubt. in your direction, <laughs> definitely. Perfect. They'll probably, Too... probably see it before I, I tell them about it. Yeah. Okay, of course. Yeah, I would I would expect so. So it's two more viewers. So I've, I think I've yeah. doubled, yeah. doubled my normal number of viewers. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a success straight away. It, um, it is. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll get I'll get a few more Turkish people involved as well. Don't worry. Fantastic. Yeah, everyone's welcome. Excellent. Um, okay. Yeah, I'll move on to my next um, proverb now, which is a very common one. I think you know it's used a lot by native English speakers. And it's Rome wasn't built in a day. Rome wasn't built in a day. So this is quite self-explanatory, I guess. I mean, Rome obviously was a huge or is a huge city, but of course, to to it, it didn't just appear from from nothing. It, it took decades or centuries to become the Rome as we know it today. So it, it wasn't built in a day. So the idea of this proverb is that any big project project or anything worth achieving takes time. You, you need to dedicate time to it. And the reason I chose this proverb today is because I think in modern society, in modern times, people expect things to happen tomorrow or today. Now, we, we expect to see results very quickly. And again, relating it to learning English, that doesn't happen. You need to be patient. You need time and, and effort, of course. And, you know, we you're not going to see immediate results. It, you need to to wait um just be consistent with your prepar your studying and and you know if you are preparing for an exam because it, it's it's the, the exams are sort of more short term goals but they are still you still need time to to prepare and get to the level you're you're looking for so really the the the, the essence of this proverb is be patient you know it takes time and just just keep going 
Yeah, I, I like that one. I think uh, that can be used uh, across a lot of things, can't it? Just, yeah, the idea of being patient. Mm -hmm. And obviously, it's, I, I suppose, it, it's also suggesting that you're at the end, you'll get something magnificent, right? Or something special. Yeah. So, yeah, as long as you keep going along that path and keep building, I guess, uh, mm -hmm. then you, you should find your way. Yeah, I think it's it's a motivational thing, isn't it? More than anything, to yeah. to put th put things into context a little bit. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And as I said, in modern times, you know, where everything is immediate, I think we need reminding. We need to remind ourselves sometimes mm -hmm. that Rome wasn't built in a day. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Very much so. Good. So, what do you have next? Uh, so I have the pen is mightier than the sword. Mm, good one. Yeah. So I thought that was a nice one in the sense that. I think often it's used in terms of maybe a fight or a struggle in terms of society. So the suggestion is rather than actually physically fighting, it, it's better to kind of, I, I guess, not only write, but also speak about these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's very useful in dis different aspects of life. Yeah, because as you said, it's the pen is mightier than the sword. But I think... Well, the way I take that proverb is, you know, words or diplomacy, it's more effective and more powerful than, than you know, physical violence or attacks or, or even more aggressive, a more aggressive attitude. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm always keen on kind of things to do with, with writing or literature, I suppose. So, yeah, I thought if people didn't know that one then that's that's always a good one to to use or to come up with i think um especially yeah. if you feel as if you have to fight a battle in some way mm -hmm. so i think that's that's always a good one to to remember yeah my next one it's um <laughs> it's, well I'll, I'll explain it and and then we can talk about how it could be used but uh it's a bad workman blames his tools a bad workman blames his tools. So again, if you think of the literal meaning of a bad workman blames his tools, it's let's say a carpenter is is creating um, or building a table, and it, it it it's terrible. The result is it's it's awful. You know, it's the the dimensions are wrong. It's all wonky. It looks horrible, and he could just say, "Well, it's because I have a terrible chisel, for example, or or my saw is bent. I don't know." <laughs> But he's not taking the responsibility himself. That's the idea. You know, it's because he's a bad workman. He's not good at his job. That's why the table is a disaster. It's easy to blame your tools, but at the end of the day, you need to take personal responsibility. You could blame the exercise book for not being not explaining that grammatical point that came up in the exam, or or blame your teacher even, or blame the website you've been using or the app you've been using when. You know, really, at the end of the day, it's it's about the individual to take responsibility to to study in this case, or to to work hard and and do better. So, really, for me, this this proverb is about personal responsibility and not making excuses and blaming others or other you know the resources you have. Is that how you interpret that proverb, John? Yeah, very much so. I suppose that's it, isn't it? I mean, I think um, sometimes people get into this idea that that you know bad things are happening and it's not their fault, and and I suppose it's taking that positive element again, isn't it? And, and mm -hmm. thinking, okay, don't don't blame something else for for what's going on. You know, try and take respons responsibility for that. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's just perhaps reminding yourself of responsibility to some extent isn't it yeah and what about kind of... what about you do you ever as a podcaster do you ever blame your tools when <laughs> you have a, <laughs> a bad experience in a podcast well i mean not at all because i i think a lot of the time the the tools themselves make you sound much better than you actually are. <laughs> so right. um yeah i could i would never want to blame my tools for that reason and right. uh and Gideon very kindly recommended a soft software program recently that makes makes life even easier. So, yeah, I think the tools themselves make you make you sound much more polished. And uh, if people actually knew 
what what went on behind the scenes then then they might be quite surprised so so the tools i i hail the tools i i love the tools yeah <laughs> yeah i feel the same at thinking about it yeah the editing software for my videos i mean when we have an interview i you know I, I i speak normally but in in the videos i edit out all the pauses and mistakes i make or, or if i just say something stupid i just edit it out so it makes me appear much more articulate and <laughs> uh, and confident than i really am so it's um yeah that it's true in this case it's it's the opposite of blaming the tools it's praising the tools i guess or worshiping the tools maybe yeah yeah bad a bad man a bad workman blames his tools so basically take take responsibility yourself and stop making excuses so what about you john what's your next one so i've got too many cooks spoil the block broth mm -hmm. um so i i guess broth is is kind of a, a type of soup isn't it kind of uh using using meat isn't it typically mm -hmm. meat juice but yeah i thought this was a good one on the on the idea that maybe sometimes when you're you're studying people give you different advice and and say different things and sometimes it can be confusing because too many people are saying too many different things to you mm -hmm. so i suppose sometimes yeah it's thinking about that and maybe your own opinion could be the right opinion maybe you mm -hmm. don't always have to listen to many other people in order to come to the right conclusion mm -hmm. and yeah, I suppose in terms of a cooking context, it's probably true, right? If there mm -hmm. are too many chefs around uh, the broth, I, I'm sure they're all adding a bit of salt in and, and <laughs> that way it's it's not going to taste too good, is it? Yeah. No, I guess all these proverbs come from some you know, real situation. We, they, we use them in a figurative or metaphorical sense nowadays, you, usually, but... Um, but yeah, I guess this this proverb comes from experiences where you know, you know probably somebody's preparing a broth, and yeah, you know, one person says add a bit more salt, and some someone else says add, I don't know how you prepare a broth to be honest, but whatever you have to do, and in the end it's spoiled. It's 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 a disaster because of too many too many cooks, too many opinions, too many different contributions. So yeah, in in many areas of life. I think that's true. Sure. I mean, essentially, people just need to watch your channel, watch Gideon's channel and listen that's to it. my podcast. And that's yeah, it. that's that's all you need for your English learning needs. That covers every aspect. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So three, just three cooks are enough. We, we don't spoil the, any broth, <laughs> the three of us. We try not to anyway. Maybe no. we spoil all of the broths. I don't know. We're not really helping at all, but no, I think we are. I think uh, I, I hope so. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. I have a, another one. Um, this one's a bit more sort of philosophical and deep, and it's kind of a variation on, on others. I think I've heard this concept expressed in, in different ways, but it's um, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Hmm. So this one, again, it's quite self-explanatory. It's not so difficult to understand, but it's good to remind yourself sometimes that, you know, maybe you have, a long way to go in your English, for example, you want to, you're at a, let's say a B1 level and you want to reach a C2 level. And it seems like it's you know, a distant dream. It, it's going to take years, but you have to start. You have to take that first step, just get started. Um, and then the, the second step, step follows the first step. And, you know, with patience and time, Rome wasn't built in a day. <laughs> I, I think that's a great one because I suppose it, it could cover procrastination couldn't it mm -hmm. putting things off yeah and also i remember you talking about that in the podcast episode we did together you were talking about running sometimes mm -hmm. you don't feel like running but then you just get out there and and you think okay i'll do do 10 minutes i'll do five minutes and then you end up enjoying it and you end up being there for 30 minutes or so or or, or you know kind of running a lot more than you expected and i think that's probably true of most things and particularly studying english if you if you don't feel like it well just do five minutes take take mm -hmm. one step and then maybe those five minutes turn into 10 or, or 15 um you know they don't have to but if they do then you know great then then you'll kind of feel better about things and and you'll probably feel a bit more 
motivated a bit more confident about what you're doing and then next time you're probably more likely to stay take that step i guess yeah i, I couldn't agree more but i have to be honest and i have to admit that see, i don't know when we i don't remember which month we uh i appeared on your podcast but um to be honest i didn't run for about eight months I only started running again the day before yesterday. So that oh, wow. okay. my, don't, you can take my advice with a pinch of salt because I, I didn't really, um, but yeah, I, it is true. It is true. You have to do that. And I was just feeling lazy for a few months, but I, I've got, got back into the rhythm now, but yeah, definitely a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Do you have another one, John? Uh, yeah. Don't count your chickens before they hatch mm -hmm. I think that's quite a good one so I guess that focuses on the idea of complacency doesn't it so mm -hmm. don't think that you've succeeded before you potentially have so I guess it, it's another farming analogy isn't it similar mm -hmm. to the the hay haystack one mm -hmm. and um yes I mean it's it's basically saying that maybe not all of your um, your chickens will hatch from the eggs. Um, so yeah, don't, don't think that you've got 12, uh, when you have 12 eggs, maybe, maybe you only have 10. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it's just making sure you, I don't know, dot the I's and cross the T's, make, make sure you are not complacent and you do keep on the ball. Yeah. Don't, don't think you're, you're there. Don't think you've, you've got there. You've got the success or achieved what you're looking for before you actually get there yeah don't and again i'm going to relate that to taking an english exam that you know, some people make the mistake of being a little bit overconfident and thinking they have the level thinking they're, they're ready for the exam but they're not because they haven't prepared enough so they shouldn't they, you know they might not pass so they shouldn't count their chickens before they're hatched they shouldn't celebrate until they get the um the certificate. I think uh, that that plenty of proverbs for people to be working on. As I always say, that if they want to remember these, like all vocabulary, but especially these kind of more figurative and metaphorical idioms and proverbs, then they, you know, you need to think of your own examples and and put them in context and and use it or lose it. I think I think with proverbs though as well, a lot of people don't, or a lot of people who are learning English don't feel as if they use that often but mm -hmm. when you actually think about it we do use them pretty frequently don't we and yeah. we don't always we're not always conscious of the fact that we're doing that mm -hmm. and i think they're so part of the language that you just kind of say them automatically and and yeah as going through those those are not it's not really a fruitless task is it they are commonly used yeah uh, people would understand exactly what you were saying if you were saying those things Exactly, yeah, and as, that's why I compare them to idioms. You, you may, as a as a learner of English as a second language, you may never use the, these proverbs and idioms yourself in your active vocabulary. But it's so useful to understand them because, as you said, John, we do use them. They're very common, and you know it, it's very difficult to understand the essence of a sentence if if they, if you don't understand the the proverb that that's used so um you know you, you can't learn them all there are hundreds of proverbs and hundreds of idiomatic expressions but just to, to know if uh, have a base i think it really does help to it's, it's also learning sort of the culture of the language and i know that people watching this this interview this video will every time we said a proverb they'll be thinking about how the, the equivalent in their own language because almost all of these proverbs i'm sure have a, an equivalent proverb in their own language some will be very similar maybe very similar uh, situations or examples some will be expressing the same idea but using different proverbs different uh, vocabulary but i do think yeah i think they're, they're fun to learn and useful and you just learn a little bit more about the, the culture of the language, as I said. Yeah, definitely. I think you probably sound a bit more like a native speaker as well. Yeah, definitely. It takes it, it, it makes the difference. It's the difference between a, a good level of English and, you know, a really high proficient level of English. Mm -hmm. So fantastic. Thank you very much, John. There's some really nice proverbs, very well explained. So thank you yeah. for, for sharing. Thanks for thanks for having me ben yeah it's been it's been fun yeah again I'll, i highly recommend john's 
uh, podcast, um, English with Monty. I'll put the link in the the video description. But as John said, you can find in find it in all the usual places, right, where, where you find podcasts. I think the best thing about the podcast is that you don't get to see Gideon's face, so mm. it's it's much better. You just get to hear his voice rather than right. having to look at him. So that's probably the advantage. Exactly. Just hear his dulcet tones. So Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> highly recommendable. Thank you very much, Ben. I appreciate that. Not at all. Okay. Thanks, John. Take care. Okay. Take care. Bye.